Hi, everybody. Uh, it's time for a new chapter in our lives. And that's chapter four. And that's all about uh, calculus. Uh, and we're going to in three dimensions. In other words, we're going to take all the all the concepts and the principles that we learned on a plane, and we're going to apply them to three dimensional space. And that's um, so remember, all it is, is taking what we've learned already, and just applying it in a new area. So it's uh, it's new, but it's old at the same time, meaning it's unfamiliar, but it's familiar at the same time. So here we go. <clears throat> this is, uh, let, me, oh, let me share my screen with you. Uh, this is chapter, so here we are, chapter four, functions of two variables. And and that's going to be what space is, but we'll, I'll explain all that. And uh, chapter four, functions of two variables, and, and on the textbook is page 239. And here we go. I don't need this anymore, so I'm going to get rid of it. And let's uh, let's begin. So I want it, what I do want to call up, uh, actually, hold on to that for, for a minute. What I do want to call up here is the official definition of a function of two variables. So the official definition of a function of two variables is that you have an ordered pair, x and y, and that's your input. So instead of having one number being your input, you have two numbers are your input. And the function, so now once we, we already use it, usually it's y equals f of x. That's what we had down here, y equals f of x. The thing is, we're using y and x here. So what do we get? So what? So what? What letter are we going to use? Well, we're going to go the next letter, z. So we're going to write it z is equal to f of x comma y. So x comma y is an ordered pair. It's two. It's basically which is just two numbers. And z is the function of these two numbers. And, and the function can take any form: a polynomial, a fraction, whatever, all an exponent, all these different things. So um, the uh, <clears throat> let's let's give an example. I think giving an example will make it make a lot more sense. So I'm going to switch over to my paper and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, here we go. I'm switching over and I'm going to write some stuff. Oh, I got to change my background and we're going to be in business here. Uh, I have to unblur and now I'm going to change to the other camera. And now we are. Ah, OK, perfect. Now we're in business. So as an example, I don't, know if, I, don't know if, if, I don't know if any of you guys ever rented a car, but when you do, they charge you, they charge you by the day. Some, you know, some of them they have different deals, whatever. They charge you by the day, and they also may or may not charge you by the mile. And of course, there's always different deals. Some, some don't charge, whatever. There's all different deals, but often it's very common they charge you by the day and charge you by the miles, meaning you have to pay a certain amount. For every day you have the car, it means even if you take the car and don't drive one inch, you take the car and you park it, and then you leave it there, and then when it's when you finished, you, you park it right by you know right next door to the to the to the uh, rent a car place, and then uh, when when the time is up, whatever many days you have it for, you you just bring it back and you've driven maybe like you know ten feet. Uh, well, it doesn't matter because the fact you had the car this you know let's say whatever three days whatever it is they're going to charge you for three days uh worth of having the car even if you did even if you didn't drive one inch on the other hand if you let's say you only drive the car for one day uh or or you know you only have the car for one day and you drive like 50 billion you know you drive like to seattle or something so you drive like i don't know a thousand miles or more than a thousand so um so they're going to charge you a heap of money even though it was only one day because you did a lot of miles in other words, the, the final cost, the final cost for your payment, it's really, it's not just a function of the number of days, and it's not just a function of the number of miles, it's a function of both of these things. And that's why we have multivariable um, functions, because, you know, I mean, that's the way things are in life. Things are in life are, are, are usually made up of a lot of different factors that, that factor into something, and this is a very simple example. So let's say, for example, you rent a car, and it's let's say it's let's say that it's forty dollars a day. I'm gonna write that down. Forty dollars uh, a day, and they charge you fifteen cents uh, a mile. So forty, they charge you forty dollars a day. So the way I'm gonna write that is that the cost C is, stands for cost of. Now I'm gonna write this. As, as a multivariable equation. So we're going to write it of D comma 
m, where d, of course, is the number of days and m is the number of miles. Okay, <clears throat> and the only thing is, I have I have something here that's that's not good, because if you notice here, I have dollars and here I have cents, and and we know when we put things together into an equation, we need them to be the same the same. So I'm going to go with dollars. After all, there is a place dollar rent a car. This is not a paid advertisement. Anyway, so it's going to be 40D plus 0.15M, meaning that every day is another $40 and every mile is another 0.15 of a dollar, which is 15 cents. And if let's say you're going to have the car for four days and drive 100 miles. So that would be C of... 4 comma 100 and it's going to equal according to the formula 40 uh, times 4 plus 0. 0.15 times 100 and again that's the case of 40 days uh, and uh, 100 miles sounds like a, a song country song 40 days 100 miles anyway this is uh, 160 plus 15 which equals 175. So, so the cost of 100. Now, what if I would switch these guys? C of 100 comma 4. I'm switching the 4 and the 100. Well, that has a whole different meaning. That means you're renting the car for 100 days, which you may as well buy it at that point, and, and you're only driving 4 miles. So you, you're renting the car for 100 days, you only drive, and that's kind of a weird, crazy thing to do, but I'm just saying, and, and maybe in real life, you'd never do such a thing, but that's what this means. And according to the formula, that will come out to be, even though you're only driven four miles, according to the formula, that is going to be 100 times, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 100, uh, 40 times 100, I'll just write times 40, it doesn't matter. Uh, 40 times the number of days plus 0.15 times the number of miles, which is four. So this is 4,000 plus uh, 0.6, which is kind of weird, which is equal to $4,000.60. This was $175. This is, so, so, so you're basically paying $4,000 to have a car and only drive it four miles. Why are you paying so much money? Well, you kept it for 100 days. That was your downfall. But the point is that this is a function of two variables. Now, how would you graph a function of two variables? Because it, 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 you really have to see, C, you know, uh, C is, uh, you have three variables here in a way. You know, you have M, D, M, and C, you know, or, or C is the, uh, the cost, but C is the function. The point is that on a graph, so you have a, you know, you need three axes. Now I'll show you roughly how to graph this. this is a very, I'm going to show you a very wonderful tool if when you're going to do three dimensional stuffy stuff, and that's called I'm going to type it in right now. G E O, geogebra.com, geogebra.com. It's kind of a cross with geometry and algebra. Get it, geogebra? And you click here. It says 3D calculator. Now, even though it says calculator, it's really like a, it shows you a graph. Uh, and I'm going to type in, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use the variables. Uh, I'm going to use, uh, well, first of all, I just want to say that I'm going, oops, I lost my, uh, lost, I lost myself here. Yeah, where, where is it? Where am I? I'm going to um, go to GeoGebra and I'm going to use, going to use, so I'm going to go to GeoGebra. It's a great uh, GeoGebra. Gebra. By the way, GeoGebra, you can, you can go to the website, geogebra.com, or there's an app. You can, get, you, can, you can get an app on your phone, the GeoGebra app. Um, I'm going to write this. I'm going to, I'm going to use the variables uh, X, Y, and Z. So Z equals 40X plus 0.15Y. I'm going to, I'm going to type this uh, equation into GeoGebra. So let me share my screen with you. And where did GeoGebra go? It was just here a minute ago. Here we go. Here's GeoGebra. There you go. 
So it's GeoGebra 3D Calculator. You, you can go to geogebra.org slash 3D. You can do the GeoGebra app. But I'm going to input here Z. What, what just happened? Uh, let's, try it, let's try it again. Z. Oh, I see. I hit the window key and said Z equals 40X. 40X plus uh, 0.15Y. 0.15Y. And hit enter. And that's what we have. That's so interesting. We have it's pretty much now. It looks like it's kind of a straight. This is kind of even though it looks straight, it's actually slight. It looks like it's a see. It looks when you look at it here, it looks like it's, it looks like this this green uh, thing. This is the actual graph. So if you notice, it's a plane, and it looks like it's a perfectly vertical, you know, plane. But if you if you turn the graph this way, you see that it's not a hundred percent. You see that little space there? It's not 100% touching the Z. The, the, by the way, this blue uh, arrow here is the Z axis. So um, so there you go. Uh, I have to, I like GeoGebra a lot because uh, you could you could get... You, you, first of all, I could just have it spin so I could see what's going on, or I could just stop it anytime I want. You know, it, it's a very, very cool and awesome. Very awesome, very cool. Uh, very awesome, very cool. So, that, so it's something I definitely like a lot and what i guess i want to say now well i actually i know what i want to say now <laughs> i guess i know what i want to say now is basically how can you tell which is which axis is which i see a red a green a blue how can you tell well the, the vertical axis that they saw is, is the z the, the blue one here is the z but between these two the, between the red and the green which is x and which is y well one thing that Jojo lets me do is let me let me position it. So notice that the the, the blue axis, the, the x axis, the z axis, as you say, just kind of disappeared. And I'm looking at what they call a bird's eye view. So if you notice the uh, the green uh, curve goes like this, that means that a very small change in x get, brings about a very large change in y, which means that the red axis is the x axis, and the the green axis is the y axis because any change in X gets multiplied by 40 as a change in Y, whereas a change in uh, Y gets really, is actually uh, multiplied by 0.15, which is less than one. So, so really um, based on the, you know, based on the, uh, I guess what I'm gonna say the slope here, this is what you're gonna have, this is bird's eye view. So therefore the green is the Y and the uh, red is the X. And again, GeoGebra is a fabulous website. Uh, that, let's just play with it a little bit and then, and then we'll go back. I'm gonna get rid of this. So we're done with this here. And I'm just going to do uh, z equals um, x uh, squared, oops, uh, squared uh, plus, so uh, well, look at that, z equals x squared. You get a sort of a parabola. It's like a sheet of paper bent, folded, like sort of in a parabola type shape. Uh, and let's, let's add in a y squared plus Oh, look at this. When you add the plus y, it becomes like a sort of a, a, a sort of a slide. I shoot some ladders here. But, and if I put an exponent on that, we get this. Oh, look at this. It's sort of a circular parabola. And you could look at, you could look at this thing from every different angle. You could spin it around. You could, well, here, nothing's happening. I, it looks like nothing's happening, but because it's so, this is so, such a symmetric thing. You could look at it from every, you could look from the top, from the bottom. Uh, it's really just a, a wonderful, wonderful program. And it, and it makes, the three-dimensional, uh, you know, math is so much easier because now you can visualize. You know, when I was in, when I was in school, Sonny, when I was in school, we didn't have these programs, and you had to really try to visualize. It was, it was not easy. Did the best we could, but you know, here you, you, I'm looking at this. It, it, the pictures aren't in front of us. It makes it much easier to picture what's going on, and uh, the more, and, and in general, the more you can get a better visual understanding of what's going on, uh, the more. And more you can visualize what's going on, the the, the easier the math uh, winds up being, <clears throat> because it becomes more. It just makes more sense and um, takes takes the, the the drama and the mystery out of it. Okay. Well, anyway, we're gonna go back to our. We're gonna go back to uh, some more more math. Speaking of math. Okay. So let's do a new example. Let's say that we have function. Now here we're gonna do a function of of four variables. So. I can't even handle it. I, I can't even handle this on uh, GeoGebra. Sorry about that. But here's a function of four variables: f, 
Because like I say, they're very often, I'll give it, you know, uh, X, Y, Z, W, X, comma, Y, comma, Z, comma, W, uh, is equal to 35 times X squared W minus one over Z plus Y, Z squared. So we want to evaluate, we want to evaluate F of zero comma one comma two comma three uh, you want to know what does that equal? Well, that equals, uh, this equals, <clears throat> let's see, x is uh, 0. So this equals uh, 35 times 0 squared times 3. And of course, the whole thing is going to be 0. Minus 1 over z, which is uh, 2. Plus y, which is 1 times z squared, which is 2 squared. So we basically have negative 1 half plus 4, which is, uh, I'm going to say, 3.5. And there you go. That's, that's, our, that's our answer. So uh, yay. So we could evaluate a function. Now, like I say, it, you know, in, in real life, you know, life imitates art, but you know, in real life, things are functions of, of uh, more than one variable. It's very common of... Uh, you know, for the, a very great example of that, by the way, is the um, the weather. You know, the weather is a function of uh, temperature, it's a function of humidity, it's a function of wind, um, it's a function of pressure, air pressure. There are a lot of factors that affect the weather, that affect how you feel. You know, it could be it could be the same temperature. You know, you guys, most of you guys are, are from here in Southern California, uh, where it's, we do not have a lot of humidity. But I got to tell you, humidity makes a huge difference in weather. I, I mean, I, I, I'm originally from the East Coast, and trust me, you can have a day where it's 72 degrees on the East Coast, but it feels worse. It feels hotter than a day here where it's like 80 degrees or 90 degrees even, uh, because the humidity just makes you feel all sweaty and, you know, yucky. So uh, that's just a fact. And, and the wind affects it. Sometimes wind cools you down. Sometimes wind heats you up, depending on you know a lot of factors. A lot of factors. Well, here we have wind. When you get here in 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 uh, San Diego, we get these things called Santa Anas. I'm sure you've heard of them. And uh, you know the, here, the, they have wind, which actually make you know makes you makes things hotter. So um, there are many factors in in the weather. There are many 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 factors. Uh, and of course, position, longitude, latitude, elevation. There are many many factors that affect the. Uh, and affect the weather and affect how you feel. So uh, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, life has a lot of variables and factors. And, and, and why am I saying this? Because a lot of times students, when they learn, when they talk about multivariable, they start like freaking out and they start saying, well, I can't picture four, what's four dimensions. Oh, the fourth dimension, that sounds like science fiction. But we don't really mean it that way. Don't, like, don't even try to picture as a, as a four dimensional thing. Dimensions in math just means variables. Means different variables. Different, uh, different variables. That's um, that's what we mean when we say multi-dimension. Just means multi or multi-variable. Just means several factors that affect something. That's all it means. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can locate some points. How do you find a point? Uh, well, again, uh, on GeoGebra, I'm gonna I'm gonna type in. Uh, two, comma five, comma three. Uh, I'm gonna oh, I'm gonna put it with uh, parentheses, of course. I mess up the parentheses. I gotta fix. What oh, very uh, picky on here. Okay, there you go. Uh, okay, guys, it's all over because they're they're having uh having a uh, all right. Let me, let me do the parentheses first. Now I'm gonna do uh two, comma five, comma now, if I just did two comma five, notice that it put it right here. See, there's a two on the x-axis and a five on the y-axis. But now I'm going to put in a third variable. I'm going to put three, and now it's going to raise it up here. So it's three on. So it's uh, three on the z-axis. So if it's three on the z-axis, well, why does it look like a three? It's oh, there. Well, I get you know, it's a funny thing. It depends on the angle. See, it looked it looked for a minute like the. It looked like it wasn't so high on the z-axis, but when I raise it more, when I get a more, uh, you know, direct look at it, 
And when I'm looking from a from directly at it, notice that the 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 x y axis you don't even see it anymore. So it just looks like a line. The, the whole x y plane just becomes looking like a line, and you see the z is up to three. Uh, that's cute. You have little arrows here. So that's uh, that's one point. So let's do it. Let's let's get another point. Um, let's do uh, I don't know. Um, uh, negative uh, negative one comma uh, two comma um, negative four. So it, we're down there. So I went I went negative one in the x direction. Uh, I went uh, it's positive two in the y direction, and I uh, went negative four in the z direction. So it put me down there, and that's the um, that's what a point. That's a located point. So basically, you go starting from the origin, just like with two-dimensional graphs. You start from the origin. You go two in the x direction, three in the y direction, then five in the z direction because z direction is up, and that's how it works. Uh, the, actually, the textbook had a kind of nice step-by-step -step picture of it. Let me just show you. The, let me just show you the textbook here. Um, in so here we want to look at the point. Well, actually, we're also we're also talking about the point two comma. We're looking at the point two comma three comma four. So. You start on the xy plane, and start on the xy plane. So get your xy point, and then from that xy point, you go up up to the z. So if it's uh, the point four three two, so you go four on the x, you go two on the y, and then you go up three on the z, and that's how you do it. But you're starting from the origin again. It's hard to it's hard to uh, picture this stuff. See, see, this is a beautiful GeoGebra because it's very, even even GeoGebra is very hard to picture something three dimensional on a two on a two dimensional page, but we do the best we can. So starting from the axis, we go. So if we want the point four three two, starting from the origin, we go four on the x, two on the y, and then up three on the z. And that's how that's how we find the point. That's how we get points. Uh, that's how we get points because what students always want. They want to be able to get points. Hi, ah, see what I did there? That's a. Uh, I thought that was hilarious. Let's look at some, let's look at some, uh, again, look at uh, some graphs. So, yeah, I have to say the best way to learn, to learn uh, stuff is to fool around with it. So let's, let's see what happens. What happens if we have a point X equals uh, four? Because, you know, in, 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 in regular graphing, this winds up being a straight line, but here it winds up being a plane. It winds up being a plane. Now, of course, X equals four. So it hits the X axis at four. Uh, and it's parallel. If you think about it, it's parallel to the, to this plane. This is called the Y Z plane because you have the Y axis and the Z axis. So it's sort of parallel to this to the plane, um, perpendicular to the X axis. Just like just just kind of like the just like X similar in a way to X equals four uh, in um, in X equals four in in um, you know regular regular graphing, two dimensional graphing. Uh, let's try another one. Once, once we're doing this, let's do uh, y equals four. Let's see what happens we do that. Y equals um, yeah four. Right? And look at that. We got this guy right here. We got a different plane. And if we let's um, I'm, guess what I'm going to do next. I'm going to do z equals four. Let's see what happens. Z equals four, and we get another plane that way. So again, this is what happens. So this is what happens when you when you let a crazy math teacher fool around with this new toy, but yeah, this is this is what this is what happens, and it's spinning around. It's kind of nice. I can enjoy that. You can look at it from every different angle. You can let it spin. You could turn it upside down. You can get you just, you could just get now. What I'm doing now, I'm kind of having fun just playing around with this, and I write, I advise you to have fun playing around. With it. Just get the get either download the app on your phone or. Or go on, go onto the, you know, into the uh, internet, and by playing around, you you learn uh, you learn the skills, you learn how the graphs work, and then you start to understand the math a lot better. You know, it's like, how does it? What's one of the hardest skills that we have is walking. So how does a kid learn how to walk? They just kind of do it. They play around. They just do it, and and before you know it, they know how to walk. Uh, now I'm not saying we have to we should be that haphazard in, in the study of calculus, but but if you do kind of just play around with these, the, this toy, uh, the GeoGebra toy, you will get uh, certain insights and you kind of learn skills. And, and then of course we're also going to have book learning, which is going to make it even greater.
So the next video is going to continue on this topic of uh, three-dimensional grass. It's going to be, uh, so this is part one. Um, and we're gonna, I'm going to make a next video is going to be part two, same section of 4.1, but the next video is going to be a part uh, two. And we're going to learn more exciting mathematics. So everybody, we'll see you guys uh, next time. It's been loads of fun and we'll see you. Bye.